Bereshit, Genesis 114. And Elohim said, Let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens, to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and appointed times, and for days and years. As you can see in this passage, that the moon, the sun, and the stars are the true calendar made by Yahuwah for us to be able to keep time. We know that the rising and the falling of the sun gives us a day, and we can easily keep track of this. And the moon can give us the day of the month. But if we didn't have a paper calendar and we didn't know what day it was, then how could we determine when the seasons began and when the seasons end? This is where the stars come into play. Quote, In many ancient cultures, the Pleiades was associated with the changing of the seasons. That is because in Earth's northern hemisphere, the Pleiades becomes visible in the sky at the dawn in the spring and at sunset in the fall. This led it to become a symbol of times of sowing and harvest. The ancient Aztecs of Mexico based their 52-year calendar cycle on the position of the Pleiades. They began each new cycle when the Pleiades ascended to a position directly overhead at the sky's zenith. At midnight on that day, the Aztecs performed an elaborate ritual celebrating the heavens and the earth. Quote, the helical near-dawn rising of the Pleiades in the spring in the northern hemisphere has from ancient times augured the opening of the seafaring and farming season, while its dawn, autumnal setting marked the season's end. Quote, in each culture, reads the Pleiades for a natural calendar, often to supplement a solar calendar, particularly of the solstices, using the Pleiades as a fine-tuning of the natural calendar. The star cluster's annual schedule is important to many cultures because the dates coincide with the ending and beginning of the growing season, seasonal changes, and activities. At midwinter, the Pleiades rise, first appear, directly overhead. The cluster has reached its zenith or highest point in the night sky. You can mark the midpoint of the winter season but watching for the zenith. Many cultures begin their new year at this time. The Pleiades appears around the time of the first autumn frost which kills the hot weather loving crops, corn, peppers, tomatoes, squash, potatoes, etc. As the growing season nears an end, you watch the sky for the appearance of the Pleiades. You know you need to harvest all your crops before the plants are killed by frost and the crops are frozen, damaged, and no longer edible. Kohalif, Ecclesiastes 3.1 For every matter there is an appointed time, even a time for every pursuit under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Notice the semicolon between the first and second sentence in this passage. This shows the relationship between a time to be born and a time to plant, and a time to die and a time to uproot. We have all heard the phrase in the dead of winter, and rightfully so, because everything looks dead during the winter season, with the leaves falling from the trees and the grass turns yellow and brown. And we know that spring brings new life and new beginnings. The Pleiades marks the beginning and the ending of the planting season, and the planting and the harvesting. Quote, the Pleiades have a long and varied history across the world as timekeepers. Across many cultures in the historic helical rising of the Pleiades marks the new year and the beginning of the spring planting season. In others, this time was marked by a period when the Pleiades were in conjunct with the sun and visible in the sky. For some Native American tribes, the conjunction period was a signal to begin spring planting 
while in Greece the helical rising began the sailing season. This would mean that the vernal equinox was the beginning of the new year, marked by the conjunction of the sun with Pleiades. Proceeding into the helical rising period, in contrast, it has been suggested that the acronical rising period through the accumulation was a time when the gates of the other world or spirit world were opened, perhaps giving us the root of the celebration of Sam Hain. The month of November is now sometimes called the month of Pleiades. Quote, in ancient times, many cultures used the Pleiades as a calendar by its appearance in the sky. The farmers knew when to start harvesting or planting crops, and the sailors understood when it was time to open the navigation season. The name Pleiades was possibly derived from the Greek word meaning to sail. Quote, the Pleiades gave the ancients a sense of time. Over 10,000 years ago, hunter-gatherers in the Paleolithic period were able to observe the Pleiades appear late October and disappear in April, thus signaling a winter's end and the beginning of the new agricultural season. Quote, when the sun is between Earth and the Pleiades, from Earth it looks as if the Pleiades disappear into the sun. Around the 15th of April, the Pleiades disappears from the sky. So what does scripture say about using the Pleiades as a calendar to mark the seasons? Job 38. Do you bind the bands of Kema or loosen the cords of Kassil? Do you bring out the constellation in its season? Or do you lead the bear with its sons? Notice in this passage that the Pleiades, which in Hebrew is called Kema, is used as a seasonal marker along with Kassil, which is also called Orion. Quote, Many ancient cultures used the Pleiades for marking important points in their calendar. For example, in ancient Greece and other Mediterranean civilizations, the day of their first appearance in the sky before sunrise marked the beginning of the sailing season. The modern holiday of Halloween partly comes from an ancient Druid myth that the veil between the dead and the living was at its thinnest when the Pleiades reached their highest point at midnight which happens around October the 31st each year. All over the globe, the Pleiades are found in ancient myth." End quote. This is a quote from 3rd century AD. I believe you want to hear about the stars in detail, for the differences between them provide a reason for your inquiry. Here are the Pleiades, signs for sowing and for reaping, when they set or when they appear once more as the changing seasons bring them and opposite them are the Hyades. Quote, For Persians, the feast of Isis began with the midnight cumulation of the Pleiades. Australian tribes danced in honor of the seven stars, while Brazilian tribes regarded the group as their ancestors. In South Africa, the Pleiades were of agricultural importance as the hoeing stars. Amos 5.8 He who made the Kema and Kassil, and who turns the shadow of death into morning, and darkened day into night, who is calling for the waters of the sea, and pours them out on the face of the earth. Yahuwah is his name. This passage clearly shows that Yahuwah is who controls the seasons of winter, which is the shadow of death, and the morning, which is the spring, the time of new beginnings. Quote, in ancient on days, the Pleiades were associated with abundance because they returned to the southern hemisphere sky each year at harvest time. In Quechua, they are called Kolka, which means storehouse. End quote. Quote, a group of stars, the Pleiades, shone in the sky as an important time marker. The rising helical or acronical of these stars announced the ancient populations a special period of the year or the starting of a new season. Quote, on November 18th, the Pleiades are in opposition, 180 degrees from the sun, rising at sunset, culminating at midnight, and the setting at sunrise. 
We have all heard the story of the Exodus, but what if I told you that the Pleiades marks the Exodus and a clue to this was given to us before the first Exodus? She moved Exodus 2.15. And Pharaoh heard of this matter, and he sought to kill Moshe. But Moshe fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. And the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water. And they filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Quote, high visibility of the star cluster Pleiades in the night sky and its position along the elliptic, which approximates to the solar system's common planetary plane, has been given importance in many cultures, ancient and modern, as noted by scholar Stiff Thompson. The constellation was nearly always imagined as a group of seven sisters. Notice that the Pleiades were considered the seven sisters in many cultures, and the priest of Midian had seven daughters. Shemoth, Exodus 2.17 But the shepherds came and drove them away. Then Moshe stood up and came to their rescue and watered their flock, and they came to Ruel their father. And he said, How is it that you have come so soon today? And they said, A Mitzrayan rescued us from the hands of the shepherds, and he also drew enough water for us and watered the flock. Quote, the Pleiades would flee mighty Orion and plunge into misty deep, as they set into the west, which they would begin to do just before the dawn during October, November, a good time of year to lay up for your ship after the fine summer weather and remember to work the land. In the Mediterranean agriculture, autumn is the time to plow and sow. Notice how the sisters fled from the shepherds in this passage, and the word for shepherd is also associated with Orion. Quote, the Babylonian star catalogs of the late Bronze Age name Orion the heavenly shepherd or true shepherd of Andu. Shemoth, Exodus 2.20 and he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why did you leave the man? Call him and let him eat bread. And Moshe agreed to dwell with the man, and he gave Zipporah his daughter to Moshe. The name Tephorah in this passage is Hebrew Strong's 6855, which means a bird or Moshe's wife. Quote, Another common concept held the Pleiades to be birds. In rural European areas, for example, the cluster was often called the hen, or the hen with her chicks. The first exodus was to deliver the Israelites from the false gods of Egypt, and there were ten plagues and ten gods of the Egyptian pantheon. The first plague was water into blood. She moved Exodus 7.20, and Moshe and Aaron did so, as Yahuwah commanded, and he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river, in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The ancient Egyptians had a deity named Happy, and Happy was the god of the annual flooding of the Nile. When Yahuwah turned the water to blood, he rendered happy useless. The next plague was the plague of frogs. Shemoth Exodus 8, 6. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Mitzrayim, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Mitzrayim. The Egyptians had a deity named Hekwet. It was sometimes spelled Heket. It is an Egyptian goddess of fertility identified with Hathor. It represented in the form of a frog. To the Egyptian, the frog was the ancient symbol of fertility. By bringing the frogs upon the land, Yahuwah was showing that Heket was not a god and was a useless idol. Next was the plague of lice. Shemoth, Exodus 8:17, And they did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the land become gnats, and all the land of Mitzrayim. 
Egyptians had a god named Geb who was believed to be the deity of the earth and was central to the ancient Egyptian creation myth. When Yahuwah brought the lice upon the land, he was showing that this was not a god, but another useless idol. The next was the plague of the flies. Shemoth Exodus 8.24 And Yahuwah did so, and a thick swarm of flies came into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Mitzrayim, and the land was ruined because of the swarms of flies. The Egyptians had a deity named Kepri, who was associated with the scarab or dung beetle, making him one of the most famous insect gods. Yahuwah bringing the flies upon Mitzrayim was showing that this Kepri was another false god and could not control insects. Next was the plague of livestock. Shemoth Exodus 9, 6, And Yahuwah did this word on the next day, and all the livestock of Mitzrayim died, but of the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. Egyptians had a deity named Hathor, the cow goddess. In many occasions, she was personified as a cow, a figure of her material and sublime character, although her symbol was usually shown as a woman with a crown of cow horns and a solar disc. Yahuwah, destroying the livestock in Mitzrayim, was showing that Hathor was not a god at all, but a useless idol. Next was the plague of boils and sores. Shemoth Exodus 9.10 So they took ashes from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moshe scattered them towards the heaven, and they caused boils and breaking out in sores on man and beast. The Egyptians worshipped a deity named Isis, who was a major goddess in ancient Egyptian religion, whom worship spread throughout the Greco-Roman world. Her maternal aid was invoked in healing spells to benefit ordinary people. By Yahuwah bringing bulls and sores upon man and beast, he was showing that Isis had no power of healing, but was a useless idol. Next was the plague of hail. Shemoth, Exodus 9.23 then Moshe stretched out his rod towards the heavens, and Yahuwah sent thunder and hail, and fire came down to the earth, and Yahuwah rained hail on the land of Mitzrayim. The Egyptians had a goddess named Nut. She is considered one of the oldest deities among the Egyptian pantheon, with her origin being found in the creation story of Herlopris. She was originally the goddess of nighttime sky, but eventually became referred to simply as the sky goddess. By Yahuwah sending thunder, hail, and fire down to the earth, he was showing that Nut had no power over the sky and that it was a useless idol. Next was the plague of locusts, Shemoth Exodus 10:13, And Moshe stretched out his rod over the land of Mitzrayim, and Yahuwah brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. Morning came, and the east wind brought the locusts. The Egyptians worshipped a deity named Set, who was the god of desert storms, disorder, violence, foreigners, and ancient Egyptian religion. By Yahuwah bringing the east wind, he was showing that Set had no power over storms and that he is a useless idol. Next was the plague of darkness. Shemoth Exodus 10.22 And Moshe stretched out his hand towards the heavens, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Mitzrayim for three days. The Egyptians had a deity, a sun deity, named Ra. By Yahuwah bringing darkness upon the land of Mitzrayim, he was showing that Ra had no power over the sun and was a useless idol. Last was the plague of the firstborn, Shemoth, Exodus 12, 29. And it came to be at midnight that Yahuwah struck all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, from the firstborn of the Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captain who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock. The Egyptians believed that their Pharaoh to be the mediator between the gods and the world of men. After the death, the Pharaoh would become divine identified with Osiris, the father of Horus and the god of the dead, and passed on his sacred powers and position to the new pharaoh, his son. By destroying the pharaoh's firstborn, he was showing 
that Pharaoh was not a god king at all. The ten plagues of Egypt gave great esteem to Yahuwah, showing that he is the only true Elohim and that there is no other. We know that the Pleiades represents the seven fallen ones who have led all of mankind astray, as in Hanuk, Enoch, 18.13. I saw there seven stars like burning mountains, and to me, when I inquired regarding them, the messenger said, This place is the end of Shamaim and the earth. This has become a prison for the stars and the host of the Shamaim, and the stars which roll over the fire are they that transgress the commandment of Yahuwah in the beginning of their rising, because they did not come forth at their appointed times. And he was wroth with them, and bound them to the time when their guilt should be completely ended for ten thousand years. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the messengers who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits assuming many forms are defiling mankind, and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as mighty ones, till the day of the great judgment, in which they shall be rightly ruled, till they are made an end of. And the women also of the messengers who went astray shall become demons. At the end of days during the second Passover, the seven fallen angels will be judged, and that is why there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials. These seven demons were worshipped as earth gods and goddesses. Kasson, Revelation 16:7. And the first messenger sounded, and there came to be hell and fire mixed with blood. And they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The earth gods and goddesses are now rendered useless by Yahuwah. These seven demons have been worshipped throughout history as gods of healing. Kasson, Revelation 16.2 And the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and an evil and wicked sore came upon the men, and those having the mark of the beast, and those worshipping his image. Kasson, Revelation 16.10 And the fifth messenger poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his reign became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues from the pain, and they blasphemed the Elohim of the heavens for their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their works. The false healing gods now made useless by Yahuwah. These seven demons were also worshipped as water gods and goddesses. Kasson, Revelation 8.8 8. And the second messenger sounded, and what looked like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. And the third messenger sounded, and a great star fell from the heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on the thirds of the rivers and the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. As water and ocean gods and the worship of them required sacrifice and blood drinking. Kasson, Revelation 16.3 and the second messenger poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood, as of a dead one. And every living creature in the sea died. And the third messenger poured out his bowl on the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the messenger of the water saying, You are righteous, O Yahuwah, the one who is, and who was, and who shall be, because you have judged these, because they have shed the blood of the set-apart ones and the prophets, and you given them blood to drink, for they deserve it. The water gods and goddesses are made useless by Yahuwah, these seven demons were also worshipped as gods of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Kasson, Revelation 8.12 And the fourth messenger sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. 
Kasson, Revelation 16, 8. And the fourth messenger poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was given to him to burn men with fire. And the men were burned with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of Elohim, who possessed authority over these plagues, and they did not repent to give him esteem. All the false sun, moon, and star gods and goddesses rendered useless by Yahuwah. And just like the final plague in Egypt that ended the Pharaoh's most prized god, which was himself, the god king of Egypt, by killing his heir to the throne, his firstborn, it will end with the prince of the power of the heir. Kasson, Revelation 16, 17. And the seventh messenger poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the dwelling place of the heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. The Pleiades rises in the beginning of winter, just as the seven fallen angels did in the beginning of the fall of mankind. They rose up to leave mankind astray. The Pleiades remains in the sky for six months before it disappears on April 15th. This represents the 6,000 years of mankind. Our Passover is held every year in April, or the Hebrew month of Abib. And there are seven days of unleavened bread. This represents the seven years of tribulation, where there will be a shortage of food, and people will have to survive off the bare minimum and have to make food in haste. And at the end of the seven years, when Yahuwah comes down in a cloud to judge the seven fallen ones and all that worship them, they will disappear, just as the Pleiades disappears right after the Passover on the 15th of April. Now we all know that the true exodus for us has not happened yet, as written in Revelation. And we all look to the day of his returning to deliver us from the hands of the evil ones a second time. Yeshayahu, Isaiah 11.11 11. And it shall be in that day that Yahuwah sets his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Ashur and from Mitzrayim and Pathros and Cush and from Eliam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall raise a banner for the nations and gather the outcasts of Yisrael and assemble the dispersed of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. The Exodus is written in the stars for a reminder from Yahuwah and it occurs every year. The Pleiades rises in the winter's months in Israel. Quote, Winter in Israel approaches the end of October, beginning of November, and ends in late March, during which the time temperatures plummet to lows of 41 degrees in Jerusalem and 50 degrees in Tel Aviv. Since winter is represented as death, and the Pleiades represents the seven fallen angels as mentioned in Enoch, this represents the beginning of fall of mankind. Quote, when the sun is between earth and Pleiades from earth, it looks as if the Pleiades disappears into the sun around the 15th of April. The Pleiades disappears from the sky. Where do they go? Ancient people reckon to the underworld. Telahim, Psalms 19.1 The heavens are proclaiming the esteem of El, and the expanse is declaring the work of his hand. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. Every year when we look to the sky, we see his plan of salvation for us and the judgment of the seven fallen ones who have led mankind astray. As the Pleiades rises in the winter, marking the beginning of their reign, leading mankind astray and their disappearance in April, showing that their judgment and the beginning of spring, a time for a new beginning and a time for the new Jerusalem. We pray that this message is a blessing to you. And until we speak again, may Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Shalom.